Um, Jasper is a winner in the nature stories category uh, with this extraordinary story about uh, how the, how on, how on the Japanese snow monkeys and they were once viewed as sacred and they're now very much more mundane, um, not only as tourist attractions, but also as pets and well, also as pests. Um, it's a foray into the challenge of living side by side, man and wild animals in modern day society. Jasper Dus is a Dutch wildlife and travel photographer, uh, and you've published in National Geographic, Geo, Smithsonian, amongst others, and you are an ambassador for the Dutch World Wildlife Fund, as well as a fellow on the International League of Conservation Photographers. Please. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you so much. I'm very excited uh, being here. Um, I'm also very excited for presenting this work for the very first time. It's still a work in uh, progress. Um, and I'm very thankful for World Press providing a platform for us to tell these stories. And it has been a very interesting roller coaster ride these past two days. Um, I uh, received a question uh, for a television interview earlier this week. Uh, and it was based on a situation where um, a monkey in India kidnapped a baby. And um, the, the question to me was, do you feel that monkeys can still be trusted? <laughs> and I didn't really understand the question at first. It was like, what, what do you want to know? What, what do you want me to say? Can monkeys still be trusted? Like we have some, some agreement with other species. And, <laughs> and it made me very sad because that's the way we look at wild animals these days. And I see that more and more. Um, well, after working with the Japanese macaques for 11 years now, uh, focusing on it from a wildlife photographer's perspective, I got to know them pretty well. I know some individuals in this group very well in the, um, in the Japanese Alps. This is the um, most northernly living non-human primate. And they're phenomenal animals. You might know them from uh, bathing in the hot springs, as you can see here. It's a very popular place among photographers, and they've taken thousands and thousands of images. Um, from this place, and so have I, and I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just fascinated by the species, and I uh, started to, to portray them uh, the way I saw them. Um, they're so close to us. I think all primate species are very closely related, and at one point I noticed that my images were quite different from the ones that I'd seen before, so I decided to pitch it to National Geographic magazine, especially after taking this image, um, where you can see um, uh, a monkey floating on a magic carpet through the galaxy, which is kind of surreal. Um, in fact, it's a monkey sitting on a rock in a blizzard. But uh, I pitched a story to the magazine, and um, my editor, Kathy Moran, asked me the question, like, these, these, quite, these pictures are really nice, Jasper, but what's this story? And I couldn't really answer the question. I could only say these are really cool animals, and they should be treated with respect, like we should treat all species on this planet with respect but I didn't really get it until um, somebody pointed out to me that I was actually um, a consumer of a system that in the end was feeding into a huge animal wildlife conflict. And you have to realize that these monkeys in Japanese Alps, like many other places in Japan, they're living in what they call monkey parks. Um, they're created situations where monkeys come down from the mountains, they're being fed um, and at certain locations, and after eating they go and wander around and they go back and sleep in the mountains. So you have semi-conditioned animals in that area. And they did that uh, initially to keep monkeys away from the agricultural land, because you have two primate species uh, stuck on an island, Japanese macaques, and us humans, and we compete for the same uh, food source. Um, so they wanted monkeys to keep away from the agricultural field, so they started these, um, uh, these monkey parks. And what happens if you start creating ideal conditions, feeding monkeys on, uh, on a long-term basis? Well, you can guess, um, they start growing in numbers. And they didn't really uh, think of that at first. So now we're dealing with a situation where you have a tenfold of the population uh, compared to uh, the early 50s. And you have these monkeys living up here in the mountains, <laughs> replicating. And um, they're looking down at something, um, at human society. And 
if you, if you look at uh, animal uh, wildlife conflicts in general, most of the time it's the uh, shrinking of the animal territory, which is the problem. Like we're expanding, animal territory is shrinking, and therefore um, you end up being in a conflict situation. In Japan, it's the opposite. So what's happening is that, especially in the rural areas, people are leaving, um, and therefore the intermediate section between human territory and monkey territory in the mountains is not being utilized anymore, which uh, gives a chance for monkeys to expand their territory and eventually go down into that human zone where you find these, uh, these large agricultural lands, which is, it's not like Luca just uh, showed us, it's, it's large scale agri agriculture uh, on a very high level. In Japan, you don't find that. It's all very uh, small scale agriculture, uh, very divided uh, land patches, and it makes it very easy for monkeys to go out and uh, raid crops. Um, we have to deal with another thing, and um, that's the fact that these animals have a religious status. So, uh, first of all, the, the uh, hunters don't want to hunt monkeys because they look so similar to us. And the other thing is that uh, you have a religious status, so they're being believed that um, they are the mediators between man and the gods. And um, they've been protected since 1947. And here you see a man uh, dressed up as a monkey doing a performance um, where he's inviting the gods to come to a shrine. And um, there are many mythical stories about monkeys, and that's also why people don't want to manage populations. It, it, it feels wrong. Um, there are also beliefs that monkeys have healing powers. So there are stories from uh, centuries ago where the monkeys would um, travel with monkey trainers from samurai stable to samurai stable to heal the horses that were um, being hurt during the war. And that's the reason that that tradition of uh, training monkeys continued throughout the centuries, and that's the reason why you can still find uh, animal entertainment on the street in modern Japan today. And when I saw this for the first time, um, yeah, it was, it was heartbreaking, really. I had worked with these animals in the wild for such a long time, and um, I was talking to the uh, trainers and I asked them what's the goal of this in, in this modern day society where we lost our beliefs of, of these monkeys having healing power and they said, well, these animals are being seen as a pest and we want to show people that they're intelligent animals by celebrating their physical and mental strength. And they're trying to uh, show that to kids that these animals are actually nothing to be afraid of, they're just like us. And I was very happy to meet this group of monkey trainers that allowed me being part of their lives. And I, I could see up close how, um, how these monkeys are actually still part of daily life. These kids didn't even look up when the monkey uh, passed. And I was just stunned by the whole scene the whole time. I was also fascinated by the fact that these, um, these people really care about the animals. I didn't expect that at first. So they treat them like their own babies. Um, this is a good example where there was a monkey being 10 years old, um, very ill. You can see the tumors coming through his, his back. Um, I took these images and I provided prints for the, for the people later when I revisited. And um, when I revisited, they took me into the kitchen after spending a whole day with them and they brought out the urn that you can see here with the ashes of the monkey. And um, they started sharing memories and they started crying and I started crying as well and I stepped out and eventually took this image. Um, all of this that I told you up till now um, creates a situation where it's being seen as normal, like the tradition with the dancing macaques, the crop raiding situation, creates a situation where it's being seen as normal to have monkeys as pets, which you can see here, which is very different from how I look at monkeys. Um, so um, here you see a monkey that's being babysit uh, by its neighbors. So these are the, na uh, the neighbors. They invite the monkey to come over every day, and they entertain it for a couple of hours. And my editor just asked me, like, I, I want you to understand why these people actually keep monkeys, what's so nice about it, because you have to show some empathy in your pictures. And actually, I did learn to understand why people like monkeys that much and like to have them, because they're they're cute, aren't they? So um, people see them as surrogate babies. They, they really treat them as their own, uh, as their own children. 
And then I was in a situation uh, photographing this family, and then all of, a, all of a sudden the daughter came in uh, carrying a pug uh, in a special dog bag. And I looked at it, having a, a woman here with a monkey, and then the other side there was a female with a, with a pug. And I realized it's not all that different. It, it's exactly the same. So um, yeah, for me, it has been a roller coaster ride mentally as well, because I started to look at having pets in my own place um, from a completely other perspective. Um, from a Western perspective, walking into this, I would say, well, this is wrong. This would have to change. Why are they doing this? But knowing that it's exactly the same, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure anymore. And then somebody raised the question, yeah, but we're looking at a domesticated animal and animals that are actually taken from the wild. And that's a very, it was a very good question, but are we really looking at that difference? Isn't it just a different stage of domestication? And domestication in the past was done because we uh, could make use of animals, make use of dogs, make use of cattle. Now it's more uh, self-gratification. So um, why do you have a dog? Just because you like having a dog. It's, it, it's before, because of your own pleasure. And that's the same here with, with her having a monkey. Uh, so let's take it one step further. Uh, we go into the entertainment industry because uh, having a pet, um, it's a slipping slope. This guy used to have a monkey as a pet. The uh, monkey just started copying the behavior um, of uh, this guy while working in a restaurant. And a few months later, we had a monkey working in a restaurant. And at the end of the uh, restaurant session, this monkey would walk around, bring beers to tourists. You could ask a monkey to bring a beer. Uh, he would open the fridge, take out the beer, and would bring it to the, to the tourist, and he would smile and laugh and, and make fun of it. And at the end of the session, uh, they would do an entertainment uh, show, where they, which would be different every night, and eventually would, um, would end with what they would call its sexy time. Uh, they would turn on a red light, and the monkey, completely trained, would lay on the ground, spread its legs, and pet the diaper uh, that he was wearing. And it was, it was heartbreaking, really, to, to seeing that and, and having a cheering crowd right behind me. And the main question that remains is, why are we doing all this to, to wild animals? Because, uh, to me, it, it reminds me of this of prostitution, although there's no sexual activity. Um, this reminds me of slavery, like all these animals are on a leash, and I asked them why is the leash there, and it's mainly because of the responsibility. Uh, the, the trainers and the owners are responsible uh, for something, if something would happen, which actually happened while I was there. At the adults, they, they wear a metal uh, chain construction around the diaper because they can take the diaper off very quickly, but as they were changing clothes with the monkey, the, the chains were just laying on the ground, and the monkey just grabbed them, and he threw them to my head, um, like this far away from my head, through the paper walls. Um, they're wild animals, and I think people should realize that. And they're not, they shouldn't be used for, for things like modern slavery, mockery. Like, this is pure entertainment, and I still don't understand why, um, going back in August. And it's always, always difficult to, uh, to step into this world. Um, it's, it's a bizarre world, really. And I, uh, here you see, at an entertainment park, you see a monkey jumping on a jet ski. I asked the uh, monkey trainer uh, after this event, because the monkey would crash into the water all the time, and I would ask the monkey uh, trainer, uh, does the monkey like water? And she said, no, straight to my face. And the main question I had was like, why do you do it? But uh, I'm in an other culture, I'm, I didn't work with a fixer here, I was just on my own, uh, or together with a friend, and we didn't speak the language. Yeah, um, I, I still have many questions uh, yet to answer. Um, but for me, this feels like humiliation, and it's being taken to such a, such a level. Um, here we're back at the restaurant, um, where also the sexy time um, a picture was taken, and um, the owner has two hobbies, having monkeys and creating paper mache masks. So here he's just monetizing his two hobbies um, for tourism. So he created a Donald Trump mask and he's entertaining um, the public with that. Um, I would like to end with introducing um, Riku to you. Uh, Riku is a monkey that has been working in this industry for the last 17 years. Um, taken unceremoniously from the wild 
and being trained into a caricature. And um, yeah, they're really sacred no more. I uh, would like to quote a very good quote from The Doors, People Are Strange. Um, and just to show how strange they are, I received this from uh, the monkey trainers earlier this week after the news came out with World Press. It's a very nice gesture of these people. They, they've been born and raised with this tradition of monkeys being there. Um, they, don't, they don't realize, and I hope that uh, this whole story will plant a seed into uh, the community and that change will come inside out. And I would like to end with a quote of, uh, or a poem by the famous um, poet Basho. Uh, and I hope it will make you think. Um, year by year, uh, the monkey mask reveals the monkey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have time for one question. If, does anyone have a, have a question that you might want to? Um, yes, please, one question here. Uh, thank you, Jasper. Uh, you said the change has to come from within. within. Yes. Um, if you would compare it, for example, to bullfighting in Spain, which is a different topic, but there's mm -hmm. some similarity in it. Yes. Uh, do you see already changes in the Japanese society from people who are starting to oppose this uh, kind of abuse? Uh, not yet. I was actually stunned that there was no animal activity uh, group focusing on this. So I hope um, this, this series will start a debate. But for me, it would have been too easy to walk into the restaurant, take pictures and just say, this is bad. Because then you just get a counter reaction and you never start a debate and uh, start a thought process. So I hope uh, I'll be part of the debate and that this will, will help causing the change. And that it will be published in Japan? Uh, yeah, I'm excited that the ex exhibition uh, will travel to Japan to four different locations. So I'm looking forward to see what comes out of that. Thank you very much, Thank you. Jasper. Thank you.